I mean, we're, we're worried about China. We're worried about the European slowdowns. But the U.S. shale producers, they're just going to keep putting more food on the table, are they not? I mean, they're just going to keep producing. Well, it's interesting. Uh, a, a couple of the EMP, the publicly traded producers, they've come out with their fourth quarter results in the last few weeks. Uh, and they have forecasted their level of spending for the new year. They're all getting religion, so to speak, reining in spending, uh, spending within cash flow. And that's led to uh, reductions in their levels of production growth. But they're still growing production even as they cut back CapEx. Um, I think one area that's really underappreciated by the market is the role of the private producers. We tend to focus on the publicly traded companies. Yeah. Um, they get a lot of coverage. But the private producers accounted for over half of the growth in the rig count last year, over 30 percent of the new well permits and they don't have the same calculus about drilling because they're, they're not answerable to public shareholders that want to see profitability so growth is a bit more of a driver for them and that's been continuing this this shale growth going forward we talked about it on friday on the program very briefly in our rbi not a lot of people are talking about it but there's a bill going through congress it's called the basically no oil production no and ex yeah it's no pec basically it's a bill in congress to try to make no OPEC effectively illegal, and the penalty would be we're going to seize assets in the U.S. if you're part of a cartel. Forget about why it's there. The, the point is, it could be approved by this Congress and a president who clearly does not like OPEC. If that bill is passed into law, if we outlaw OPEC, what are they going to do? What do you think the outcome of that is going to be? They might just say, okay, you know what? Forget you, America. We're going to do what we want. I think it could leave some of our uh, companies exposed. I mean, this really reflects the big paradigm shift that we've had now that we are a net energy exporter, the largest crude oil producer in the world. We can't solely focus on having the lowest possible gasoline prices at the pump. Energy is a bigger contributor to our industry and economy, so we also have to look at what happens on the oil side for the, for the producers as well. And we want to try and find that Goldilocks price that's not too high for consumers, but that also supports long-term investments. And I think what we'll find is, is that as volatile as oil prices have been with these very wide swings from high to low prices, mm. all of that would continue and, and get probably even worse if we didn't have some sort of body that tried to regulate and st stabilize and, prices. And OPEC hasn't always been effective at that in terms of price stabilization, but we do need some kind of agent out there. Otherwise, the volatility could get even Tomorrow, worse. Tomorrow, what price is that oil porridge? Perfect. 65 to 75? I think that's too high. Yeah. Oh, you do? I, I think that's too much. Um, the, that too much uh, supply is going to come online from that, and that will crater prices in the long term. I also think that in some parts of the world, it starts to hit to demand destruction levels. Um, so I think that, you know, we could t test 60 in the second half of the year. Uh, that's a seasonally stronger period of time, but I think we'd close the year uh, a bit lower than that, probably around 55.